For my first time viewers, my videos and I are heavily associated with Spider-Man, both for my critiques on comics, movies, and games featuring the character, but also my uncanny ability to cosplay the all red and blue doofus. But as my longtime viewers and my slowly declining analytics can tell you, sometimes I get a little bored of Captain Complainer and his spandex-clad crusade. So if you'll indulge me, I'm finally doing a video on one of my other cosplays. In this case, the main hero of my favorite game of all time, Isaac Clark from Dead Space. Dead Space is the ultimate nostalgia trip for me. I played it when it came out and my little 10-year-old self was scared to death before the third level was over, but I just kept playing it. I also played a lot of it with my uncle and my dad. My first YouTube videos ever were when I was 11 years old and I made an animated sitcom about Dead Space's protagonist living in an apartment with Samus and Master Chief. Go check those out if you want to see some cringe slash Godzilla Mendoza history, I guess. Years later, Dead Space was the first game I got every single achievement in and had played it beginning to end about 10 times by myself. In short, I adore this game and this unique, bizarrely designed main character. But my cosplaying him this year was... rather... spontaneous. I didn't really plan to make this suit for a long time or anything, it just kind of struck me one day as I was out killing times that I could probably do it if I wanted to. So I hit up the party store and got a plastic construction helmet, a Black Panther mask, and then I went to the Hobby Lobby next door and bought a few stacks of really thick craft foam. The next night I had a rather on-model helmet because I'm very impatient and I like working on things when I'm depressed. Which is all the time! So I took a knife and strong-armed the ears off the Black Panther mask, then I used the Dremel tool to saw the brim off the construction hat after taking the straps out of it. Then I glued them together with some chunks of foam in between to help the glue grip better. I always use this gel Gorilla Glue because it's the strongest glue ever and you can use it to attach wheels to a car. Yeah, probably. I just made that up. Anyway, I made a square shape of foam for the faceplate, then started drawing and cutting foam in the shape of all these dumb angular panels and plates on his mask. Before long, I realized, hey, this actually looks like the helmet. So I refined it a little, added some foam to the sides to cover more of the head, then did that big battery pack looking thing on the back of his head. In maybe about four hours, I had made something completely different from anything I had ever done for cosplay before. Usually I just stab my thumb a thousand times or annoy my mother to set up the sewing machine and make spandex superhero costumes. I've seen tons of talented people make convincing armor sets with lightweight materials, but I never really thought I was capable of it. Then I just kind of did it on accident one night. After I had all the tiny little details on the helmet perfected, or at the very least close enough that the bitches on Instagram can't complain about it, I took it outside and then started spray painting it with this magical stuff called Plasti Dip. It's sort of a rubbery spray paint that makes foam stronger and easier to paint, but also allows it to stay flexible. It also helps keep your spray paint from eating away at the foam, and it's waterproof. It's neat stuff and I think you should all keep a can of it in your cosplay arsenal. Just don't breathe it in too much, because it'll give you drain damage, and then you'll forgot talk words good. <laughs> the Plasti Dip stuff dries faster when it's warm, but I live in a state where it's always snowing at night, so I just left it to sit in the garage and watch Shazam. Then I came back outside and it was all ready to paint again. This time I did it outside and in the daytime because, again, very impatient. I used these waterproof spray paints that are very metallic. I went over it with a layer of gold first to imply it was kind of shiny and new at one point. Then again with a rusty copper color to imply it had been dropped down a flight of stairs and spattered with oil and electrical sparks once or twice by our intrepid MIT graduate protagonist. For the glass inside of it, I used some strips of plastic covered in this sticker stuff called perforated vinyl, which is surprisingly cheap. Come to think of it, a lot of the process for making this thing was the same as making some Spider-Man lenses. Looks like my skills in that area can be applied somewhere else. And all the kids in middle school said my Spider-Man lunchbox was stupid. Now look where I am, making a helmet and being hugely in debt with student loans while living with my parents. And where are they all at? The exact same situation without the helmet, so fuck them. But yeah, here's a helmet. And then I came to the realization that I had enough foam left over that I could probably just make a whole suit. So I bought a gray Zentai online and the rest was history. Except they accidentally sent me two of them in the mail. One of which being one size too small. So I just rolled with it and opted to have it be the outer layer of material on his suit. Since his costume looks like it has a lot of layers of different materials. And with this method, I didn't have to painstakingly recreate his weird, um, leather chaps? To give the outer suit more of a leathery feel and to capture that icky brown color that characterizes most of the game's aesthetic, 
I used a brush and some brown slick puff paint to coat almost this entire smaller suit. It looks and feels very different texture wise, but it still stretches and bends just like good old spandex. Then I sewed it to the inner suit and made them one glorious spaceman's jumpsuit. Okay, now this next part is a little tedious. There are so many metal panels and plates all over the suit, layered so intricately that it all starts to make it look like one big vest. I measured, cut out, plastic dipped, and painted all of them. See these flimsy gray ones? I cut them out of gray foam, plastic dip sprayed it, then painted it gray again so it wouldn't tear as easily. This thinner foam is as durable as paper unless you go over all of that. It's a pain, but it's worth it. Once again, my household remains 100% mannequin free due to forces outside my control, so I painted and glued a lot of this while it was on a pillow inside of a trash bag. The arms were a little more difficult because I didn't have anything to put inside them that fit, so like the genius I am, I wrapped myself in plastic saran wrap and then glued the foam to myself while I wore it. Fun fact, this glue heats up when it sticks to something for the first time, and if you don't have a layer of plastic between you and the suit, it can scald your skin and fuse the fabric into your pores. Science is fun and terrifying. This suit quickly became a bit of a death trap. As cool as it looks, the foam paneling is all very solid and hard to flex initially. Putting this thing on for the first time took me about 30 minutes because I was scared of breaking something and the suit was so averse to stretching and flexing. The third time I wore it, it only took 8 minutes. You gotta break it in, so to speak. Now for the numerous accessories. I think the most intimidating part of this design for me was the health bar on the back. I know this rig is one of the coolest sci-fi machines in video games, but something about it scared me. It had to light up, and I have no idea what I'm doing when it comes to wiring lights and electricity and shit. So I enlisted the help of my dad. A few of you may remember him from that time I ate spicy wings. I had all of the materials pretty much ready to go, but it was a lot of stress figuring out how to combine them. I used a tube of plastic, this row of decorative lights that I strung through the tube, and various other things like bottle caps and metal pieces to fill in in place of some of the mechanical details. I'm very proud of how I cleverly strung the battery pack and the switch for the lights through the suit, while also being accessible to turn it on and off. That meant that I had to attach it to the back of the suit with a bit of a gap in the middle, so I used some snap buttons with small columns of foam under it to keep it raised up. It came out pretty okay, save for the snap buttons getting all mangled by the glue, making the whole thing not want to attach properly at the convention. A few of you historians on the channel may know this isn't the first time I cosplayed this character, let alone the first time I did it at a convention. Remember that Dead Space Let's Play no one watched? Neither do I. When I was about 13, my mom and dad and uncle made this suit for me in a few weeks leading up to Halloween. It was made out of a few layers of pleather, sweatpants, a turtleneck shirt, some denim, and a lot of thick foam carved by hand in the shape of armor pieces. All things considered, it came out pretty good. The lights were made from glow sticks and plastic bottles that were melted down and reshaped. At the time, we didn't know that foam and spray paint didn't get along, so the styrofoam chips and scratches and flakes off anytime I put it on. I also needed the help of like three people to put this suit on, and it was insanely hot. All the layers of foam and fake leather and warm clothes made this thing murder to wear on any summer day. <laughs> After the only convention I took this suit to, I remember peeling out of it covered in sweat and feeling lightheaded. But hey, at least the back still lit up. As much as it was a chore to get on and off, I still appreciate my parents for putting it together for me. And my dad and uncle staying up all night to figure out the helmet conundrum on the day before Halloween so I'd have something to wear. Their strategy was to make it have a baseball cap and an old Jason Voorhees mask, which actually kind of inspired the materials I chose for my thing. As a tribute to them, I had bested the old suit in just about every way, particularly practicality. Then for this, oh yeah, the stasis bar. Um, how do we get a light into that? Uh, f uh the fuck it, I don't know, just don't glue this part of the plate on the back so it's kind of like a pocket, and then slide a glow stick in it. Dunzo Bammo. All this other junk is just accessories with a lot of craft foam building. Really, if you've made the rest of the suit so far, you're pretty good at crafting metallic and mechanical looking structures with foam and Gorilla Glue, so I'll let you just figure all this out. You're an adult now, I can't hold your hand through everything. Please move out of my basement, I need that space to put my scraps of foam for making this damn thing. Baby, I love you. Thanks, you too. Anyway, the boots on the suit are rather simple and plain looking. The hardest part is getting that rusty metal look. 
I used some old skating knee pads as a base and just attached foam tubes to it. Then built a shape for the knee to cover it up. Plasti dip and done. Well, except for these little robot-y looking pieces that go on there. They make it look a little less basic, I suppose, so just carve those out, paint them, and then slap them on. For my boots, I took an old pair of Vans and attached a silly amount of foam layers to it until eventually it looked heavy, metal-plated, and clunky. These boots were made for stomping, you see. I realize the suit looks pretty good, but it kind of feels empty without the laser tool to dismember undead mutants with, so I made one of those in a total of three hours. I cut out a block of styrofoam in the shape of a handle, then attached more and more foam to it until it stopped chipping and leaving white dusty shit everywhere. Thus began the trial of finding anything in my house that looked vaguely mechanical so I could glue it onto this thing and make it look less like a block of styrofoam. I don't think the stuff I used for the decoration on this will be reproducible because this stuff is very specific. Part of it is a few panels from the casing of a broken RC car, some of it is straps from the inside of the hard hat I used to make the helmet, and some of it is casings from a defunct nuclear warhead that still has trace amounts of radiation absorbed into the alloy. Coat it in toxic rubber slime, let it dry, graffiti it up real good like that Spider-Man with the Jordans on, and then you got yourself a halfway decent prop. It's a good thing this design from the game already has big orange highlights on the tip so you won't be arrested for taking this into a convention. Speaking of, I took this costume to a contest at Denver Pop Culture Con because Comic Con is not a name anymore, I guess. Uh, and that was a lot of fun. Entry number 23, we have Xavier Mendoza as Isaac Clark from Dead Space. I got a little nervous being up on stage in front of what looked to be a few thousand people in the crowd, and I forgot the black hood that was supposed to go under the helmet like a complete idiot so you can see my red hair pouring out the sides like a Batgirl cowl. Other than that, it was okay. I met a lot of far more talented craftsmen who built bigger and better armor, but I think this was solid for my first try. All of us lost to the guy who showed up in the power loader from Alien, so I guess we're all on equal footing on just being jealous of that guy. Then the other prize went to Mrs. Doubtfire because funny and cute wins more points with judges than, you know, talent. I'm not bitter, you're bitter, shut up. I never in a million years thought I could conceive and build something this complicated in just two weeks. But I really surprised myself with this cosplay. Maybe the lesson to take away is that you shouldn't hold back because of self-doubt. If you have something you want to try, give it a shot and you might just be pretty good at it for no reason at all. Expand your horizons, try new things, and boycott EA for killing this franchise, oh my god. I could talk for days about why Dead Space 3 ruined my childhood. What an insult. That was the absolute worst thing to happen in 2013, and I got attacked by a pit bull that year. If you want me to make a two-hour video about why Dead Space 3 is bad, just leave a comment asking for more Spider-Man content. Awesome, thanks for your support. I'll write it right away. Bye. Just a quick reminder before you go that I post my videos a day early on Patreon and give exclusive behind-the-scenes content and patron-exclusive videos. Please consider becoming a patron, it really helps me out. If you want a more short-term way to support the channel, you can check out my merch in the links in the description. We have t-shirts, phone cases, posters, mugs, pillows, baby onesies, and so much more. See you next time!